W5. You rarely see an increase like that in any category of crime. The rise of hate and the violence that follows. We stand up against any forms of white supremacy. So mad that I just want to hurt people. We belong here. Hate does not. And I felt like this is something I was meant to do my whole life. Overcoming challenges in the fast lane. Drivers, start your engine! He's taught me more than I will ever teach him. My brain works at the speed of a race car. Here is Avery Haynes. Welcome to W5. What happens after a hate crime? It's a question we've been exploring in the wake of a staggering increase in the number of incidents reported to police in this country. What we've learned is that the vast majority of culprits get away with it, sparking calls for a change in the way hate is investigated. Wherever you go, you will find some good people, some bad people. Mohammed Kashif looks out onto the alley behind his home in Saskatoon, a place where he came face to face with bad people. I'm living last 20 years in this country, and some people still in their mind, this country is not my country. June 25th, 2021. Muhammad is wearing traditional Islamic clothing as he goes out for an early morning walk in his neighborhood. He hears a car pull up behind him. Two men jump out. And then he feels a searing pain. Someone stabbed me on my back and I fall down. They took my cane and they hit it on my head. And I put my hand and the stab on my hand. Mohammed says the two men pinned him down and started slashing his clothes and hacking at his beard. When these men were attacking you, what specifically were they saying to you? They're swearing so much. They told me, why you have this beer? Why are you wearing this cloth? You're not supposed to be here. You are, uh, you are Muslim and that this is not your country. So much angry. Sorry. Is it hard to talk about? You know, they stabbed me on my back, on my arm, and they hit me on my head. I, I'm okay. But when they cutted my beer, they hurt me so much. He was devastated to say the least. This represents us in a way. This is our religious identity in a way. Ali Ahmed is Muhammad's close friend. He says for many devout Muslim men, the beard is sacred. That was definitely the most terrible thing that can ever happen to anyone. Shows the tremendous amount of hate someone could possibly have in their hearts. Muhammad blacked out during the laneway attack. He eventually made his way to the front of his house, trying to get help. Five, six vehicles passed there. No one's there stop. So you were standing out here with blood all over you, trying to call, to, trying to get cars to stop, yeah. and nobody stopped? No. Then I lay on my lawn. That's a gentleman. He stopped. He see that, uh, like, blood's all over, and he called uh, 911. Mohammed needed over a dozen stitches to sew up the wounds. What did the man who attacked you look like? He has a tattoo. A tattoo? A tattoo on the sides, and he's tall. 
That afternoon, Saskatoon police put out this press release calling for witnesses, saying their investigation was in its preliminary stage. That was two years ago, and no one has been arrested. And now, with the war in the Mideast, there has been a surge of hate right across the country. In Vancouver... We've seen a, a, an uptick in the number of um, people who are contacting us who are concerned for their safety. Like the Israeli-born owner of this restaurant, displaying an Israeli flag and photos of Hamas kidnapping victims. They walk by and say, death to the Jews. Go inside my restaurant and say, I wish all the Jewish people dead. And then they run SUVs, black SUVs with tinted windows, screaming from inside, free Palestine. And I say, free the hostages. In Toronto. Last week in North York, a hate crime investigation was launched after a threat at Tandem Bomb Community Hebrew School. On Tuesday in Pickering, police say a man ripped a Palestinian flag off a vehicle and left a note with an offensive message. Many synagogues and mosques across the country are now under heightened security. Montreal police are reporting 11 hate crimes and hate incidents have targeted Arab Muslim communities. 25 hate crimes and hate incidents have targeted the Jewish community. In 2019, almost 1,950 hate crimes were reported to police. By 2021, that number had ballooned to 3,360. That's a staggering 72% increase over three years. The crimes range from violent assaults to vandalism. You rarely see uh, an increase like that in any category of crime. So it really is capturing something, uh, something else that's happening. Barbara Perry is a world-renowned authority on hate crimes and right-wing extremism. For 30 years, you've been tracking hate in this country. I mean, is there ever a point where you just think it, it can't get much worse? Well, I think every year when the data come out, uh, I think, how can it possibly get worse? But it, it just keeps inching up so that we're at the highest level we've ever been. At the Centre on Hate, Bias and Extremism at the Ontario Tech University, Perry has been reviewing cases where extreme hate ends in mass murder. And this may surprise you. She says Canada is a world leader. I've looked at other Western countries to see the number of mass murders uh, or um, multiple murders that have been associated with the far right uh, or with some of these extremist ideologies. So it wasn't just number of homicides, but the number of incidents. And, you know, per capita, uh, it's one of the, the worst histories of mass violence uh, in the West, in Canada. Among the mass murders connected to extremist views, three RCMP officers were murdered in Moncton in 2014 by a killer with far-right, anti-authoritarian beliefs. He shot him. Oh, my God! In 2017, the mosque rampage in Quebec City killed six Muslim men. The victims were businessmen, fathers, teachers, and community leaders. In 2018, a self-proclaimed incel with a rage against women killed 11 people in the Toronto van attack. Uh, I'm thinking that this is it. This is the day of retribution. In 2021, a suspected white supremacist killed four members of a Muslim family. Police say the family was targeted. And in 2022, four Indigenous women in Winnipeg were murdered allegedly by a man with ties to a far-right organization. And each one of them were what I call, call not lone actors, but networked actors. So they're acting alone, but they all had lengthy histories of consumption of far-right narratives, uh, anti-immigrant narratives, misogynistic er narratives. Not one of those cases resulted in a hate crime charge. In fact, no one in this country has ever been charged with a hate crime. And that's because even though police will declare a crime hate-motivated, there is no specific charge in the criminal code. 
One of the things that comes up very often is do we need standalone hate crime legislation? Some US states have that. We don't have anything like that. And you know, there are some who argue that maybe that's what we, what we really need. The closest we have is probably the mischief to religious property. That is a standalone. That is a hate motivated offense. But still, it's not called uh, a hate crime. The criminal code does have a specific charge for advocating genocide, promoting hatred, and inciting hatred. Judges also have the power to put someone behind bars for longer if hate is a motivating factor in a crime. So if you are convicted on some other offense, uh, an arson or an assault, the judge at sentencing can escalate the, um, the sentence uh, because of the hate motivation. But it's rarely invoked. But by far, the biggest challenge is catching people who carry out hate-fueled attacks. Many Canadian police services now have hate crime units, but they aren't always effective. Sadly, I think many of them are, are window dressing, uh, and, and they're only about the community piece, and they're not about the investigation piece. So you see you know, low rates of arrest, uh, clearance by arrest, and you see low, uh, low prosecutions. You can just get away with it. You know there, there are no consequences. It just sends one message very clearly. You can get away with hate crime in this country. That's it. That's it. Coming up. We need to reframe what violence is. How can we stop hate when our laws won't help? Do you believe that there's enough attention paid to the hate that is generated online? No, there isn't. When W5 continues. Lant knows a thing or two about hate. I decided to show my dedication to the movement by committing an assault every day for a year. My fists, bar stool, beer glasses, beer bottles, beer pitchers, baseball bat, shingle hatchet, an air gun nailer, steel toe boots, Doc Martens. The movement, white supremacy. The victims, anyone who didn't look like him. Gallant unleashed a wave of terror across the West Coast in the 1990s, and he got away with it. I've been so wounded that I've wanted to hurt other people in order to feel like I belong. So mad that I just want to hurt people. I wanted people to feel what I was feeling. That was 15 years ago. What were you thinking about the people that you were attacking? I was convinced they were enemies. Um, I, I was convinced that there was a, a, a group of people essentially coordinating um, the devastation of lives like my own. And so therefore, it was real easy to hate everybody and everything. Our tattoos. I had a swastika on my forearm, a swastika here, a Celtic cross on my back, uh, and then a Confederate flag on my hand. The uh, Canadian Jewish Congress in Edmonton arranged for me to get tattoo removal wow. through laser surgery. He hasn't just removed tattoos, he has overhauled his life. Gallant is part of a project called Extreme Dialogue, aimed at helping others escape extremism. Gallant is also a social worker and now a lawyer who has become an outspoken critic of Canada's hate laws. The, it takes a very extreme situation for an incident to be called a hate crime. Gallant was recruited by white supremacists online. A violent and troubled childhood left him vulnerable and desperate to belong somewhere. Now he is alarmed that so much of the messaging that lured him in is still out there, unchecked. The internet is like a hate farm that, that sows its, its seeds uh, in the real world. And yet, do you believe that there's enough attention paid to the hate that is generated online? No, there isn't. Um, the, there is a lack of solution-focused approaches to 
hate. We have hate, violence, discrimination, racism. They're not addressed properly in our society um, for the state of technology. Uh, it, the technology is advancing, people are adapting, and our laws are so far behind. I'm gonna scroll by this very slowly. Brace your thunder thighs, but you ape ladies are accidentally correct on this one thing. Erica Eiffel makes a living as an online journalist. Her inbox is filled with hate. I don't think you could figure out how to tie nooses, but I guess you'll find out eventually either way. She and two other female journalists were subjected to a targeted online hate campaign in the summer of 2022. They decided to go public and post the threatening and vile messages they were being subjected to. And so other fat black blobster and the usual woke West hating, man hating c I really hope you die an agonizing fing death, burnt alive, suffocated. I figures the reason you hate white men so much is because, in fact, you want them so badly. What is it like to read the words that have been written to you about you and what is going to be done to you? I, I don't know how to answer that as somebody who receives hate mail. It's not shocking to me. And, and that's the thing. I think that I've gotten so used to being called the N word or the B word or whatever, or die and bitch die. Like you kind of just, it's part of living. I, I really don't know how to process it beyond, it happens to black women and I'm a black woman. It's part of being a black woman, period, whether you're online or not. The women wrote letters to Prime Minister Trudeau and he publicly responded. And if there isn't clear condemnation of the kind of cowardly bullying we've seen, of the kind of hate-filled rants and violent words used against people, to say this has no place in our democracy. We can if you had to run down the ways that this hate has affected you and mm -hmm. the, the change in your life that you've had to, had to go through, give me a sense. Well, it's hard to eat, it's hard to sleep. Sometimes everything seems gray, it seems dark, and you just want to just sleep, lie down and just not get up, and, or go to sleep and not wake up. And yeah, I I felt that, and I there's still times where I feel that way. Has being as outspoken as you have been, has been taking people online, posting the the, the terrible things that are written to you, has that helped? How do we get to solutions if we don't speak out? And that's that's something that's a burden on women, and it's a burden on Black women especially, that somehow we have warranted this behavior because we just wouldn't shut up and we wouldn't mind our place. When you hear about this explosion of uh, physical hate crimes in this country and equate it with what's happening online, is there a correlation? What happens online will eventually go offline and it will eventually happen in person. I think the, that the whole idea of violence is supposed to be physical, but it's not. I just think we need to reframe what violence is, to be honest. Erica says she has given up hoping that police will do anything to stop the online hate. Who are we supposed to go to? I, I would love somebody to answer this question. Who are we supposed to go to when this is the state of play and this is the state of things? We've been researching what happens after a hate crime and have made some startling discoveries. Roughly seven out of every 10 cases in Canada are not cleared, meaning a suspect was not identified in about 70% of the cases. This is one of those rare cases that ended with a conviction in Ontario. Seth Bertrand, seen in this artist rendering, pleaded guilty Wednesday to inciting hatred, mischief, and breach of a court order for his actions against a same-sex couple in Trans Wellness, Ontario. This security video helped capture Bertrand as he carried out a campaign of hate, vandalizing vehicles. 
and even throwing a rock through the window with a hateful message attached. Bertrand was sentenced to five months house arrest. I don't think it's fair that he tortured us for months, not only me, but my children, um, my husband and the community. And the response to that is five months of him getting to sit at home in comfort. The RCMP says Bertrand also tried to enlist in a neo-Nazi group called Atomwaffen Division, which is listed as a terror organization. Meanwhile, in Saskatoon, Mohammed still lives in fear because his attackers are still out there. Now, if we go out or uh, do something, we, we ourselves, we keep very, like, uh, we will watch around it, who is around us. His good friend Ali doesn't have faith that police are the answer to solving hate crimes. He says education is. You gotta educate the whole system here. You gotta educate everyone about every religion that exists in Canada. It's a multicultural country. You can still coexist and uh, appreciate the differences. To see a more detailed breakdown of hate crime statistics, go to our website, w5.ctvnews.ca. I'm Avery Haynes. Thanks for watching. See you next time.